Remember when you cared about whether or not your breath smelled bad in relation to other people? Remember that? I'm not an anthropologist. I might get in a bit of anthropological morass. Who doesn't want morass? But there are cultures that we call matriarchal cultures. I'm sure for every culture we would call matriarchal, there's someone who says, oh no, the patriarchy's in there too. I mean, I don't know. I'm not an anthropologist, but I will say that there are some, the Tuaregs, in the portion of Africa where it goes from north to sub-Saharan, also known as Saharan Africa. I don't know if that's what you call it, but cultures that, you know, wander around the colonial and post-colonial boundaries that were set by not Africans. The Tuaregs are one such group and it's a matriarchal culture. So mother lives at home and men go out and do things and come back to the mother. They take the mother's name. In Iran, most women do not change their name. They keep the name that they were born with as the surname. The Choctaws are a matriarchal culture until I just found out the early 20th century with the Dawes Act, in which case land started getting assigned and passed down from father to son the American way. So I'm fascinated by this because I had a birth family with a strong matriarchy with very little personnel. So many of the generations in my family were marked by a preponderance of male children. And the women somehow were the source of power, of order, the center, the moral center, the ideological center. Now, as with the anthropological case, I'm sure there are family members who might be hearing me say this right now who might have an entirely different perspective on it. But speaking as someone who was not part of that power structure, it seemed mighty powerful from the outside and the inside.